much for joining us. So before uh, UBS bought Credit Suisse, took over Credit Suisse, Credit Suisse was being given emergency credit uh, by the Swiss National Bank, wasn't it? But that didn't calm the nerves of investors. They continued to withdraw money from Credit Suisse. So uh, is this takeover, is that the best option really looking ahead and, and in terms of trying to calm the nervousness around what's happening in the banking world at the moment? I think it's the best. There were three options. Either you let the bank go bankrupt or the state takes it over or we have a private sector, state aided private sector solution. And the latter was clearly, clearly um, the best solution. And it's not a perfect solution, but it's the best we can get at this time. And I just wanted to sort of say, look, the Credit Suisse thing is really a, a, a matter of a lot of woes that have accumulated si ever since the the the, the 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 bank took over first Boston and didn't understand the risk in in 1990. And it's just gone on and on and on since then. But it's not really interest rate linked. That's the SVB, the US banks. That's interest rate linked. This is really a matter of if you're a bank, you need the depositors and the investors' confidence. If you lose that, you lose your shirt. Yeah, you said that uh, Credit Suisse didn't understand the risk involved when it took over a U.S. bank a, a number of years ago. But, of course, excessive risk-taking was one of the characteristics of the financial crash of 2008, wasn't it, along with uh, you know, irresponsible lending. And uh, there were a number of other critiques of the banking sector at that time. So you know, have enough lessons been learned since 2008 to, to stop something of that order happening again? It's very tough. In the case of Credit Suisse, you had three um, CEOs who didn't really understand, you know, the, the position of the bank in the Swiss system, foreign CEOs, and that accelerated things next to the scandal. So you had a uh, rescue plan after a re reorientation of strategy, after reorientation of strategy, and nothing could ever get implemented. On the broader thing, well, you know, markets are, are, are torn by or are torn between hubris and fear you know and um and the second things go better hubris takes over and that's uh, clearly you know what what we have seen time and time again and for the regulator it's hard i think they've done a good job getting the right getting the right capital structures in place um, but they can't over-regulate either. If you handcuff private sector institutions, they can't do anything. So if you're the regulator, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So can the, the ship be steadied or, or are there other banks that are potentially vulnerable at the moment? Well, I think the ship for Switzerland has been steadied, so we hope. What really, what is, what gives a little bit cause for concern is that you had the additional tier one bonds, the AT1 bonds that are now, that are now, uh, they are, that are totally go under. And this is the first time, to my knowledge, in the history of, of capital markets that, um, that equity supersedes debt in the capital structure. That's not usually, that's not usually what happens. So we have about 230 plus billion dollar market in Europe, which is this AT1 market that is really struggling. And we have other banks struggling. So let's hope it was enough. But I have to say, the, the, the Swiss regulator couldn't have, all, couldn't, and the government couldn't have been faster and more swift. And you know, sometimes you just need must, and you've got to do what 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 the situation demands. Okay, Cornelia, thank you very much for your analysis of this story today. Cornelia Mayer, uh, economist, joining us.